FastAPI is a popular web framework that allows you to build custom APIs in minutes. In fact, it's so popular it's becoming commonplace for DevOps postings to have it as required experience. With just a few lines of Python code, you can have an enterprise-grade production API. Interactive documentation is automatically generated, allowing developers to spend time writing code, rather than documentation. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get started with FastAPI so you can start integrating your projects with it. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to hop into this. This is going to be a pretty quick tutorial, and I'm just going to go over the high-level items of FastAPI. Just enough for you guys to get your feet wet and start constructing your own APIs. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below or join our Discord and ask questions and someone's going to be able to help you out. So the first thing is, if you haven't already, run these pip install commands and this is going to install the fast API module and this one's going to install UVCorn. UVCorn is going to be the web server that runs fast API. So I've already run these and installed the pre-requirements. So the next thing you want to do is create a Python script file and I have one here named main.py. So if we go in here, I'm going to paste in some code and these are my basic imports. So I'm going to describe these as I go through the tutorial, but the most important one here is from fast API import fast API. After you have this, what you want to do is create an app object. So we'll go app equals fast API. So once you have that, you want to create your first endpoint. And what an endpoint is in the API is basically the URL that the person goes to. And when they go to that URL, this is going to be the code that runs. So the first thing to do is specify the endpoint path. So we do that with the at symbol and we go app dot get. And then we put in the path. So the path I'm going to use is just backslash, and this is going to be the root path. Now to explain this, this is going to be your HTTP method. So get is the basic get request, where if you just opened up Chrome and went to this URL, that would be a get request. You can also do like a post or put request. This is when your browser sends information. This is similar to like when you hit submit on a form. So I'm going to show both a get request and an advanced get request, as well as a put request. So starting off with our get requests, we have specified the endpoint path. The next thing we need to do is give a function. So you can call your function whatever you want. I'm going to call this one read underscore root. And then within your function, you can execute some code. And then after you execute your code, you should probably return something to the user. So since this is just a simple tutorial, I'm just going to comment this and say server does something. And then I'm going to return hello world. And the way I'm going to return that data is within a dictionary. So I'll go hello colon world. And the reason I'm returning it as a dictionary and not just a basic string is because when you're using APIs, it's best practice to return the data as JSON data. And since Python dictionaries translate directly to JSON data, this is the best way that you can return data. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to go back to my readme and I'm going to grab this command here. So you can see this is uvcorn. We have the script name. We have the app object, and then we have this reload flag. What the reload flag does is it just automatically restarts the server anytime you update the code. So since we're in a development environment, and this is very convenient. Anytime I'm typing something new and save it, it's going to reload the server, so I don't have to worry about that. So let's copy this, paste it in, and you can see that it looks like it's running. And if I pull up Chrome, you can see that I'm on my fitness pal. So let's go to 12700.1 port 8000. And you can see here that it returns hello world, which is the payload that we specified to return. So that's a very simple example. Before we move on at a more advanced example, let's have a look at the documentation that gets auto generated by FastAPI. So if I go here and go slash docs, you can see that some documentation was automatically generated. 
So you can see that this root endpoint read root was created. It's a get request. And if you open this up, it has some information about it. You can see that it's returning JSON data and it gives you an example. There is also a different format of the documentation. If you go up here, you can go slash redoc. And this is just a different way to view the documentation. So it's pretty cool that this is all built in. We didn't have to specify any of this documentation. It just gets automatically created as we build our API application. So let's go ahead and do a more advanced get example. I'm going to hop back into the code here. Go back to main.py. And I'm going to copy and paste in some code here. It's very similar to the one we did before. So we have the endpoint specified here, just like we had here, but we've changed it to be a variable. So if we were to go to this path, we would go slash items, and then we would specify an item ID. So this is very similar to something like an Amazon. You know, if you're on the Amazon website, you want slash items, you, then there would be like the item ID. And that's how Amazon knows how to retrieve the information for that item, such as price, the photos, the thumbnails, everything like that. So that's for the URL. And then uh, we specify our function. And then it's taking this variable. And then I'm specifying int. So basically what this is saying is the user needs to type in slash items and then they need to specify a number. It's not going to work if they put in a string, if they put in a bunch of characters, that's not going to work. It's only going to work if they put in an integer. And then after that, we have this line of code. And basically what this is saying is it's taking in a query parameter and it can be a string and by default, it doesn't need to be included. So I'm going to explain that a bit further as we're testing this out. But basically, this is a way that the user can specify additional information in the URL. Now, at the bottom here, we're just returning the item ID as well as the query that was sent. But realistically, in a real world application, you would have some code that goes here. And basically what the code would do is it would take this item ID, it would go to a database, it would retrieve information about it, and then it would return it. So I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. I'm going to go into Chrome here. I'm going to refresh the documentation. And you can see we have this new read item. And the documentation is already created for it. And then it tells you everything about it right here. So get slash items and then specify the item ID and then what to expect on a 200 and then what to expect when there's an error. So if you wanted to, you could just hit this and grab the URL, paste this up here and then change this number. And you can see that this returns the item ID two, and then it says Q null. So this Q is the query parameter that I was talking about before. To specify a query parameter in a get request, all you need to do is go up here and do question mark Q equals. And you can see I've already sort of tested this out, but we'll just go hello world. And there we go. It returns our item ID and hello world. And you can change this to whatever you want and it just automatically sends it back. So that is the basic get request, the get request with additional parameters. Let's get into a put request, and this is how you can send payload information to your API server. So we'll go back into our code, and I will paste in one more thing here. And this is our example put request. So you can see it's very similar to our last one. The one thing that I want to point out here is instead of app.get, we have app.put. So this is specifying that the request needs to send some payload information. After that, you should have slash items and then the item ID for the URL. And then we have this function named update item where we cast the item ID just like we did before. But then we have this additional parameter where it's expecting the item as well and it's mapping it to item and you can see that it's aired out my web server here and that's because we haven't specified the item class 
So to do that, let's go to the top here and we're going to build a class object. So we'll go class item and we're going to cast it as a base model. And that's why we used Pydantic import base model up here. So this is where we specify all the items of our item. So let's say that every item needs a name and the name should be a string. All our items should have a price and the price is a float. And we'll go is underscore offer. And we want this parameter to be optional as well as being a Boolean. So we'll go optional bool equals none. So basically what this means is we can have this is offer thing in our item. We can specify it as true, false, or we can omit it entirely. So I know this is a bit confusing here. Let's go ahead and have a look at how this looks in the documentation, because I think that's going to make it make a lot more sense for you guys. So let's hop back in here and we will go slash docs. And our web server is not running because I stopped it. So let's reload this. Refresh. And you can see that we get this beautiful orange color one, which is a put request and it's got items slash item ID and it's going to update the item. So if we go in here, you can see that the URL, it's expecting an item ID and the body that it's expecting is a payload like this. So name should be string price zero is offer true. So if we want to actually try this out, usually you would have to use a tool like Postman or Insomnia to send payload information to a web server. But what we can do here is just hit this try it out and it actually lets us take these and you can say my new item go 3.99 and we'll just go false and hit execute. You can see that it doesn't work because we need to specify an item ID. So let's go item number one and go execute. And scrolling down, it's saying, okay, you could have done this request by using curl. And that's how you would send the payload using curl. And you would send it to this URL. And this is the response body that the server has sent back. So going back here, you can see that it sends back the item.name as well as the item ID. And that's exactly how it sends it back here. So pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, just to go over the code again, um, obviously you would probably want some code here to do something, right? Instead of just returning data, you would probably want to update a database, send the information there and save it, and then return to the user that the information has been saved. But that's sort of up to you based on how you're building your application and sort of what logic applies for each request. I just wanted to show the most important features of Fast API so you guys can start building your own API servers. So I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you have any suggestions on what you want to see in a future video, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.